Hello my tower friends, Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and welcome of course if it's your first time visiting, I appreciate you stopping by as always. Uh, we're going to do a bit of an update video today, so I have quite a few things going on. Um, I got some decks I want to show you, and I was planning to do individual walkthroughs of them, but some of them are like Rider Wade Smith decks, so I'm not going to do like a full walkthrough, I'm just going to kind of show you them. Uh, and then I have a few other things so I can just kind of tuck in there. Uh, just a reminder, I have my uh, I have a, a Titans of Tarot interview coming up with Camille Elias in two weeks, April 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the information for that will be linked below. Very excited to include her in the series because she's really... Uh, has been influential on me lately. You know, uh, she's a sort of an unapologetic, uh, no nonsense uh, tarot teacher. She's written several books, uh, one series of books on the Lenormand playing cards and tarot uh, called Read Like the Devil. And like that's sort of her thing, Reading Like the Devil. Uh, and it's really interesting. I'm looking forward to talking to her and having a conversation. And it'll be live here on YouTube. So, you know, you'll be able to ask questions. Hopefully, we, we can get Camellia to throw the cards around a little bit and just have a good time. Um, and so that's two weeks, April 14th, 2 p.m. Eastern uh, here on YouTube. So, I'll, again, it'll be linked below. The deck in front of me I have was sent to me a couple of weeks ago. And I've really been trying to get this walkthrough out. But uh, I just haven't had the, the time to uh, devote to it. But it's the Triumphs Tarot created by my friend Gazelum Ali. And uh, they've collaborated with um, an artist, Scott Toxic. So Gazelum and I know each other from Tarot History website, from the Tarot History Facebook group. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've seen this deck in pictures, you know, on social media before, and I've showed interest in it, and it seemed like the artwork is really pretty, uh, love the colors, it's a very colorful deck, uh, but there is a bit of nudity and some controversial stuff in it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, um, you know, just the kind of G-rated version, which is most of the cards, uh, and anything else, if you are interested, you want to see a full walkthrough of this deck, uh, I will, I'm going to upload a, um, you know, an unlisted silent walkthrough of the deck so if you do want to see the full deck please just uh inbox me at um you know uh facebook messenger or um you know instagram's fine too uh, and i'll just send you the link no problem so uh so it's called the triumphs tarot and scott toxic is the artist gazelm ali uh is you know the under the instruction of gazelm ali uh and the idea is that it's very golden dawn uh, very Thoth-based, you know, Thelema, which is the philosophy of Aleister Crowley. Not my, not something I'm really knowledgeable about, you know. I've never been a huge uh, fan of Aleister Crowley. I don't have a problem with Aleister Crowley. It's just that I haven't really dedicated much time to uh, researching the specific uh, teachings. I know more about the history and the passing kind of uh, information, but... Not, not too many of the details. So I find this deck helpful in that it's sort of a distillation of that uh, tradition. It breaks down all the symbols. Uh, and there's no actual faces in this deck of people anyway. Um, it's just all symbols. So that's really interesting. And I didn't mention, but it comes in a smaller size too, which is almost like the size of a, a matchbox. And this is actually really good because it's... Um, you know, it's easy to handle, it's easy to um, conceal, you can put it in your bag or your pocket, and uh, it's just easy to uh, work with. The box is a tuck box, and it has this really nice embossed print on there in gold letters, which came out really lovely, actually. So, um, let's take a look at the deck. No little white book, instead you have some extra cards with the details written on there, the Hebrew letter correspondences, you know, the elements, and some keywords, and so forth. Uh, and so that'll come in handy. I actually kind of like that. You see it uh, quite often, um, especially, um, like, more recently. Uh, little white booklets tend to get destroyed in my house, so you know, you know, occasionally putting the um, the deck back in the book uh, in the in the box kind of destroys the little white booklet. But anyway, so I'm going to show you some thought cards too, just to give you an idea where it came from. So, sort of a traditional looking magician. You know, you have the uh, the rising sun, you have the four elements on there, the aura boros, which I don't think you see in the thought really. Um, we have a snake there, but you don't have really an Ouroboros. Uh, but you do have it in the, uh, the rider deck, you know, on the, um, the belt loop, uh, the belt buckle of the, of the, uh, magician. 
But I really like this. These are the wings of Osiris. You have the Mercury uh, energy there, which is uh, what the corresponding uh, planetary uh, information is. These are the backs. And then we have the uh, Priestess, which is actually quite traditional. You have the, um, the pillars uh, from um, King Solomon's Temple. Uh, so the Hebrew letters, like I said, are golden dawn. So you have Gemel, which is, you know, the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet. But you do have uh, Baith and Yod here, and that's because of the, the, um, the pillars, Boaz and Yaakin. Uh, and then this little bit of Hebrew here, uh, I'm told, is actually the corresponding archangels, which is not something I've ever worked with, but it's pretty cool, you know. Uh, so if you did have the deck, you could kind of, uh, you know, learn that information too. Uh, this is the Emperor, and, um, you know, to me, first, because it's, there are no labels uh, in this deck, it's mostly just um, artwork. I think there are, there are labels and numbers maybe on one card, I think it's Judgment, is the only one with, with uh, numbers that, I, that I've noticed. Um, but similar to Thoth, I mean, you can see the influence here in that you have a king, you have the crown, uh, you have the little lamb here, which is like, you know, the Lamb of God kind of thing, um, and then you have the goats, uh, which is uh, you know symbolic of uh, Aries, and then you have the uh, the little Tower de Marseille ball there, which is kind of cool, and that fiery kind of masculine energy uh, of the Emperor. Um, Taurus the Bull. So you don't have a traditional pope here uh, or a hierophant. Instead, you have a picture of a bull, uh, which is actually interesting because, and Gazelum kind of explained this to me, but, uh, you know, it's not only the uh, astrological energy of the card, you know, in the Golden Dawn tradition, like Taurus the Bull, but it's also kind of the energy of the um, the card, it's uh, the, the figure itself, you know, uh, not changing in their way, sort of stuck in their ways and uh, a bit on the conservative side. And these are the Enochian elements, which, uh, again, is not something I know much about, but uh, it was pretty cool. It was very interesting. The Lovers is cool. I really like this. It's a Caduceus, uh, and I think that that really shows the lover's uh card really well because it's like the union of opposites right and you have a black snake and a white snake but it's sort of like a mutual um it's a conscious collaboration it's not uh a permanent bond it's sort of like the bond only exists only as long as the two uh participants are willing you know uh that kind of thing and so it's um uh, it was pretty interesting, and Gazelum and I had a conversation about that, and I, I really like the Caduceus as well, too, so. And here we have the Chariot, which is uh, beautiful blue colors, you know, you have the gold stars here, which remind me a little bit of the Rider Pack. Uh, I swore I saw that somewhere in the Rider deck, uh, I'm not remembering the details right now, but it's just kind of uh, jumping out at me, and of course Cancer is the uh, astrological correspondence of the Chariot. This was actually one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's Justice. I really love this card. I love the checkered floor. Um, I really love uh, the sword and, and how it resembles the Thoth uh, in a way. But then you have that Hebrew writing of the uh, Archangel on there. And uh, I believe that's... Um, uh, what is the... Um, the Lieber is the energy. Uh, but you have the scales here. You have Alpha and Omega. But that's uh, reminiscent of uh, the Ebr the Egyptian um, mythology of Mat. You know, when when uh, the ancient Egyptians believed that when you died, your heart was weighed by Mat to see if you were eligible to, uh, you know, go to the afterlife, and, and that's what that is. Uh, at least that's what it looks like. <clears throat> the hermit is really interesting um, because it's a forward-facing hermit. Um, which you don't see very often, you know, and I don't see a lantern. The lantern's kind of, the light is sort of in the face, as well as the all-seeing eye, uh, and you have the dogs of hell, which uh, are on the, the Thoth, you know, the Thoth card, but um, it's just very interesting, you know, uh, because he's front-facing, and you can see, you know, the garb of the of the uh, hermit, but it's, it's almost like you're looking into the eyes of God. It's like that's what meditation or... Um, you know, that kind of thing is all about. It's about connecting with the divine. And so that was interesting. Um, okay. Oops. Sorry. 
we have the wheel which is you know pretty self-explanatory you have the hebrew letter and it's very kind of traditional um wheel of fortune which is uh, i believe uh, jupiter is the corresponding planet and this is uh, strength let me find the uh here we go which you know you see the leo and um that's like a snake with the mouth open but you kind of have some other things going on there as well um which kind of jump out at you uh after you look at it for a while and that's what gail gazelin was saying you know it's a great deck to uh, meditate with because there's some um layers to it you know uh, and you could also investigate the symbolism, you know, like the crown with the 10, you know, the number 7, things like that. So, oh. um, yeah. Okay, so here we have the Hanged Man, which is uh, the upside down ank, um, which is very reminiscent of Thoth. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it, there's a lot going on there, I don't quite understand it, there's a lot of watery energy as well. Um, but you have the uh, all-seeing eye, which is kind of there on the Thoth card. Um, the stigmata, which you have here. And the uh, upside-down number four. So really, I mean, it's all there, the symbolism. Um, death is uh, another one which was pretty cool. It has almost like a, a very folk art quality to it, um, like graffiti art or something or airbrush or something it's it's actually really unique um this is uh temperance okay so where we had the um and it's called art and the thoth and so where we had the kind of uh, you know the willingness of the two uh opposites that were conjoining in the lovers you have a permanent bond in the alchemy of uh, temperance and uh, that that's a pretty interesting, you know, it's because once you mix the two, they kind of become one, and it's it's uh, it's a more of a permanent bond. So, uh, and of course, very colorful. You have a rainbow there, and um, some other cool stuff going on. Okay, so the tower, uh, I see this tower a lot actually. It's um, you know the 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 lightning coming from the um, I'm trying to find it here. Here it is the lightning coming from the eye you know it's like destruction from the creator kind of thing but you also have sort of the explosion from the tower and this tower the by lady frida harris is a really powerful tower it's very violent energy on that it's actually one of my thought my favorite thought uh, cards Okay, so the moon we have a front facing dog and uh instead of uh you know the um the dog sort of barking at the moon he's facing us and then we have an egyptian scarab which i believe is also seen here if i'm not mistaken and then you have the two tower figures there Okay, and so we have the star here, which is, um, so the colors are very beautiful, and they supposedly correspond to uh, the same type deal as the Thoth, and that uh, I think it's the Kabbalistic scale of color, something like that, which I don't know much about, but I know that that's where it came from. Uh, and then we have the sun, which of course is the sun, you know, and a very beautiful card. I like the, the different rainbows, resemble sort of the uh, sun on the Thoth. And then we have uh, Judgment, which is the only numbers, uh, the only uh, card that seemingly has the numbers. And of course, it's Aeon in uh, in the, the uh, Thoth. Now, I know Crowley, I think, taught about three Aeon, and I guess this is maybe like going into the new Aeon or something. Um, and then we have the world course uh, which is called the universe here and it's very beautiful almost very traditional um, world card you know with the eagles and so forth um, there is an extra card here which is uh, it's like a wild card you know uh, so I think it's more about chaos or something 
Um, so that's something you'll have to kind of consult the, the little booklet uh, or the, the note cards for, you know. But anyway, that's, uh, again, Gazelm Ali and Scott Toxic. That will be down below. Uh, I got a lot of stuff going on here. First, I want to show you what's going on with my deck because um, I'm going to have this available in a couple of weeks. I'm just kind of figuring out the backs. But I wanted to show you um, what I've been working on uh, in terms of uh, printing card decks. So this is the Suzanne Bernadine, which is... Um, it's from 1839, you know. Uh, so it's one of the later decks. It's very Nicholas Convert in a lot of ways. But Shell David did a phenomenal job restoring this, and the colors are just beautiful. And so I'll be printing this, uh, and it will be available, you know, in uh, limited quantities. Uh, it's a majors only, um, but it, that's a little easier for me to do than 78 cards because I can dry more decks at once than... than um, the full 78 and it's also less expensive too so i can offer it at a more affordable price which uh is is kind of cool now this is a beautiful deck but um i'm really excited about this and this was i think this was like the third time i printed it because i had to do some things with it with the colors we had to work that out but it came out really good so stay t stay uh tuned for that i'll be letting you know uh we'll be printing some uh in the next few weeks Okay, so the next deck I want to show you is a deck that I had searched for high and low for many, many years, and I could never find a copy that I could afford uh, until last week. So um, this is the long out-of-print deck by Robert in place called Tower of the Saints, uh, and it was originally printed by Llewellyn. Um, this was, I believe, back in 2001, and it was Robert in Place's third tarot deck, to give you an idea of how long ago it was. Um, now, I was always searching for, like, you know, uh, something that I could relate to as a Christian, um, but also kind of went into, like, that, uh, you know, um, hermetic kind of philosophy. And this was the perfect deck, because it was all about like Christian Gnosticism and I remember googling the images and looking at them and falling in love with this deck and thinking to myself I'll probably never be able to find a copy and uh, recently uh, a woman passed away who had a, a really large tarot collection and her husband was uh, you know parting with some of the decks and this was one of them it was completely sealed it was unopened i was so afraid to open it but i of course i did um the book i've only i haven't had time to like really delve into it but i've read like the first chapter of it uh and it just talks about that kind of connection between polytheism and christianity and how the saints became sort of the lesser gods of polytheism and all the parallels and of course it's in that classic robert and play style packed with information this was like i said i think i mentioned it was his third deck ever um and i'm just so excited to have it but let me just show you uh the images so we have francis of assisi uh as the fool i'm gonna actually zoom in and the cardstock is really beautiful and has these really cool purple backs which reminds which is a liturgical color of christianity it reminds me of like uh, i believe it's advent or lent you know um it's a very catholic color uh so we have saint nicholas <clears throat> mary magdalene as the papess saint helena constantine the great the emperor which uh, of course was the roman emperor who converted to christianity and um you know brought uh you know mainstream christianity basically and here is saint peter of course as the pope or the hierophant saint valentine is the lovers but really a classic beautiful deck uh that i'm just so glad that i have a copy of it now there's saint michael saint anthony <clears throat> so the, all the various saints saint blandina the hanged one saint stephen who was the first martyr saint benedict saint margaret and the devil St. Barbara, St. Teresa, and St. Mary, who is, uh, you know, the Blessed Mother, Christ as the Son, Gabriel as Judgment, Sophia as the World, which is linked to uh, the Sophia of Alchemy and um, Hermeticism, you know. And then the pips are that classic kind of Robert M. Place look 
uh, of like the alchemical tarot, but it's really pretty. Uh, I love this style. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. This is a deck that I will uh, bring to the grave with me probably because, uh, as I said, I mean I searched for it for the longest time, and I'm just so happy I got it. So I wanted to show it to you briefly. There may be a time where I kind of do a larger video on it and go into uh, more detail about it, but uh, I just wanted to show you that because that's really it was a uh, a major life event getting that deck. I gotta tell you that. Okay, so I got a couple new rider packs, new rider decks. Um, I wanna show you this one first. Okay, so this one is the original Tarot. And it's by Siren Imports, who is, I'm sorry about the shaky table today, it's so annoying. I didn't feel like getting my good table out today, so I tried to half ass it and it's just been shaking everywhere. Um, the original tarot by, and it's the premium edition. So it's basically similar to this. Um, well, actually, they have an original tarot deck, which I had, but I gifted to my sister-in-law. But it's by the same company, Siren Imports. Uh, the one on the right is actually one of my favorite rider decks ever because it reminds me very much of the University Books uh, deck, but it has, um, you know, color-wise, it's very similar. It has a very 1970s kind of vibe to it, um, but it's just a beautiful coloring. This is here, and it's on nice linen cardstock. It's um, really one of my favorites ever. Uh, so uh, the same company puts out a deck now. This is going out of print, I believe. I can't. I can never find this deck anymore in the yellow box, but uh, it's really beautiful. What I like about it too is it has the shadow of the face on the uh, Nine of Pentacles. Which you can tell, I mean, they drew inspiration from that University Books deck, you know. Um, just a phenomenal deck. I really, really love it, and I'm glad I got it when I could. Uh, they've since put out one with uh, tan backs and a brown box instead of a yellow box. Uh, and um, it's called the Original Tarot, which is actually quite a good tarot deck. Uh, it's a pretty good rider deck, you know, for the price point especially. I mean, it's under $20. Well, they put out this version here, which is called the original. Uh, it's the premium edition. And it comes in a nice magnetic box uh, with a little booklet. Of course, it's the Key to the Tarot by uh, Arthur Edward Waite. Um, but it's done all in gold foil. The box is beautiful. And it's gold gilded. This is like a special edition kind of. Uh, deck and the uh, images are printed on like shiny gold foil print it's really nice I don't know that I'm going to read with this but it's kind of a nice like collector's piece but it's not as fancy I, as I had hoped it would be um, it, because it's all gold foil I was hoping for like gold stamping um, I don't know how I feel about this deck yet um, it's nice it's just not what I expected, put it that way. But uh, it is pretty. I mean, don't get me wrong, the gold lettering. But, I mean, had I known uh, that it wasn't, like, gold stamping, I probably would have never got it. I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't... It doesn't look like really high-quality gold. It kind of looks like it's just printed on foil and then compressed onto the card, something like that. Which some of you may really like, but it's not that different from... Uh, I have a deck that's printed in China that is um, a holographic deck, and it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. But the cards feel nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. And I do like the gold gilding of it. And the box is beautiful. So, um, the other rider deck I wanted to show you, which I got, um, is a, a U.S. Games deck, but it's in uh, the Irish language, in Gaelish or Gaelish, Gaelish. Uh, I just say the Irish language. Uh, most people say Gaelic, but Gaelic is the broader language of the Celts. You know, it's it's a it's a group of languages, so that's uh, includes, uh, you know, um, Gaelic, uh, Scottish Gaelic, you know, Irish Gaelic, and all those other various uh, places. I'm not a, an expert on the Irish language, but I wanted to have it, and I bought this actually like the day before St. Patrick's Day, um, because I just love the idea of having the Rider deck in the Irish language, uh, and it's printed by U.S. Games. 
Uh, so it's kind of a special edition, and it's just really, really cool. So let's just take a look at it. The downside, of course, is that it doesn't have uh, Pixie's font. You know, I don't know. I think that came with it. Oh yeah, a little sticker of the High Priestess uh, in Irish. I forgot that was in there. But uh, you have the U.S. Games book, all in the Irish language. Uh, you have the classic backs, of course, and then the... Uh, so, the, the, actually, the images have improved drastically, I think, with the U.S. game deck. Um, it's a little kind of... Cro the, the, the cardboard is kind of a little crooked, but that's all right. Um, I could fix that. Uh, and you don't have Pixie's calligraphy, but the images have been improved a bit, it seems like. I haven't looked at the U.S. games deck in a while, um, but they were printing in Italy for a while, which was a bit annoying, but I don't mind this. It's kind of like rustic, but it's been a while since I looked. I remember I just never liked the new U.S. Games one. Um, I always liked the original. One day I'll do a comparison of it, um, and I know they're back to printing with Pixie's calligraphy, but this is just a great deck to have because uh, it's all in Gaelic, so... Or in Irish, I should, I should say. Next up is the Enchanted Tarot, which is um, actually a deck that I had and I regifted. But this is a totally different version of this deck. Okay, so the bigger version, I can't remember who prints it. It's in a gigantic box and they're oversized cards. I actually never even opened it. I ended up passing it on. Uh, but I was actually considering repurchasing the deck because I, was, I saw it on... Um, eBay and sometimes that happens you know you get interested in a deck that you got rid of and you're like why did I get rid of that you know um, but I didn't want to buy it in the oversized size so I thought to myself I swear I man I manifested this I thought it would be really nice if it came in a smaller size because I would get it the very next day I went to the bookstore with my partner Stephen as we do on Sundays and what do I see but I'm looking around and I see the enchanted tarot and I was like, wow, it's in a smaller box. Well, here, it's being printed by that Sweetwater Press, who has published several books now recently. i got to grab one just to show you. Um, in fact, Stephen Bright has a book, uh, the In Focus um, Tarot Books. This is by Sweetwater Press. This is the company. These books are really nice. I mean, they're hardcover. They're not bound. You know, they're perfect binding, but they look nice, and they have a hardcover, so... You know, plus it comes with like a free, um, you know, like like some sort of poster or something to help you learn with. Uh, and this is the Sacred Geometry one. But they have a whole bunch of different ones. Well, that's Sweetwater Press. So that's who printed this. Now, the back was destroyed because the downside about Sweetwater Press is they don't um, uh, wrap in cellophane their, the outside of their decks. Um, so this particular store loves to put anti-theft stickers uh, on boxes and then they're impossible to get off unfortunately and that's why that was ruined but look at that price tag 9.97 for the enchanted tarot uh, and it looks really good i mean so the card quality is as you would expect for ten dollars uh, although it's not as bad as some some decks that i've seen for triple the price it has a really nice color coded kind of feel to it i slightly damaged the first card because of that damn sticker trying to open that sticker but i'm going to trim these anyway because what i'm going to do is i'm going to trim it just to the image of the card get rid of the border i think that's what i'm going to do i haven't decided 100 percent yet but uh i think it will look really good just as uh, square cards you know in the shape of the border but if all the border like if if the these little borders are all the same size you know that black little kind of border there um then i will do it you know but it's beautiful artwork it's like um i forget the medium and how this was done I, I feel like it was like tapestry or something tapestry art but uh i can't really remember but it is a classic deck and uh what do you, you know for 10 bucks you can't really beat it I'm not going to show all these because I may do a walkthrough down the road, but it's just in a beautiful style. Um, there's some of the pips. And uh, did I show you the backs? The backs are just beautiful. 
really pretty. So, I mean, this company, I feel like, is going to do really well. If they can make money printing decks for $10, I mean, especially getting deals like this with uh, people like Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, then, you know, they might do really well. Because I've bought uh, several Tower de Marseille decks from them as well. Uh, so the last deck I want to show you is not really a tarot deck or an oracle even. even. It's um, So it's basically, it's a game. It's the Endless Odyssey game. Okay, it says the Mythic Storytelling Game. These are really cool. So I've been into, uh, you know, Greek myths lately. And I saw this and I had to get it. Um, because it's very similar to how we read in the open reading style. So you have only the downside is there's only like 20 cards I think, but they're really on thick board. I mean really thick board. I haven't seen board this thick in a really long time. But it, you can never make a tarot deck this thick. It would be ginormous. I mean, but uh, so the the idea here is to shuffle the cards up, and then you draw a couple cards out, and it's all sort of Greek themed you know, Greek myth themed uh, cards. So now you have a similar border in the back and what you do is you tell a story with the images. So you have like the Cyclops here with the arrow in his eye, you have some sort of structure here, and then you have, uh, you know, some sort of uh, prince or, uh, or something here, you know. And so you tell a story just like you would with, um, you know, the open reading method in Tower de Marseille. And it works pretty well, you know, for storytelling. So, I mean, it's really... And you could do it with a lot of cards. You can do it with a few. Um, actually, I think I got that upside down. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, because that's a volcano. So, I mean, really, really cool. And you can mix them up. There's endless uh, combinations of stories you can tell. So, But, uh, yeah, so that is... Uh, um, illustrated by Sarah Young. I don't know who it's printed by, but it's very high quality. Uh, Magical Miriamos or Miriamos. Very beautiful. So, really cool artwork. But uh, anyway, I think that's about it. I, I showed you enough. I showed you everything I got in the last month uh, in terms of. Well, I got the I got that uh, Irish deck um, around St. Patrick's Day. So. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you as always. And uh, any questions or comments, pre please leave them below. And until next time, everyone, love and peace. Bye-bye.